What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today, and today we're going to skip the line a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. Let's jump back into 1981 to see what the Sioux Falls Regional Airport was like. And yes, you'll get to see Herman the Duck in a retro FSD airport update for the very first time. Let's get right into it. My plan is still to cover the 1990s. I am hopeful to do updates set in 1996, 1994, and 1992 later in the future. But I still need to acquire timetables from these years, mainly 94 and 92, before I can proceed. In addition, for 1992, I still need to acquire an American Airlines Fokker 100. Nevertheless, those airport updates are in my plans and I will continue to pursue that decade when applicable. In 1981, only three airlines served Sioux Falls, Ozark Airlines, Republic Airlines, and Western Airlines. Each airline had a number of destinations out of FSD though, and these are the services. Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Denver, Des Moines, and Sioux City, Iowa on Ozark, Brookings, South Dakota, Chicago, Minneapolis, Mitchell, South Dakota, Sioux City, Iowa, Worthington, Minnesota, and Yankton, South Dakota on Republic, Denver, Minneapolis, and Pierre, South Dakota, on Western. Many of these services stem from an era now since past, pre-airline deregulation. It wouldn't be long, however, from this point, that many of these services would be cut, resulting in the end of air travel out of many of these smaller communities. Brookings, Mitchell, and Yankton, South Dakota are the three communities featured here that do not receive commercial air service anymore. Brookings and Mitchell were cut from the Republic network by the end of the year, and Yankton was gone by 1983. However, regional carriers would fill in the gap as part of Republic's one-ticket way, such as AAA Airlines for Yankton and Masaba Airlines for Brookings and Mitchell. AAA Airlines is a bit of a mystery to me, since there isn't much I can find about them, though I know they had at least one Embraer EMB-110. They began operations in 1980 and would be acquired by Midcontinent Airlines in 1985, and their two- and three-letter codes were CT and TLA, respectively. Welcome to the Sioux Falls Airport. Today's date is April 1st, 1981. It'll be a really good day for this time of the year today, so let's take advantage of the nice weather and check out our four planes on the ground. First at Gate 1 is this Western Boeing 727-200. Western Airlines was a longtime operator into Sioux Falls, beginning flights to the city on July 16, 1955, and staying until 1987 when Delta Airlines acquired them. By this time, they are operating the Boeing 727 and 737, and over time, the 737 became the more dominant type for Western at FSD. The 727s operated only from Denver at this time, arriving at 5.28 p.m. local time as Flight 316. Next at Gate 5 rests this Ozark Douglas DC-930. Painted in Ozark's then-new livery, which would be the carrier's last before TWA acquired them in 1986, this aircraft just came in from Sioux City, Iowa. Ozark maintained an all-DC-9 fleet by the 1980s, excluding regional carrier operations later in the decade. Sioux City service was prominent as both Ozark and Republic connected the two cities in 1981. Ozark operated four daily flights on this route, this one coming on a mid-afternoon flight, Flight 562, at 2.17 p.m. local time. Total flight time on this segment usually amounted to no more than 30 minutes from wheels up to wheels down. At Gate 4 is this Republic DC-930. Republic was known for having various hybrids in its first few years of existence. After North Central and Southern merged to form the new airline, most of the airline's fleet kept the base livery of their original operator, while adding Republic titles and the Herman logo for aircraft previously operated by Southern and later Hughes Air West, who were acquired in 1980. Much of North Central's leadership transferred over to Republic, which is why Herman the Duck was used as a logo still. This was changed by 1985. This North Central hybrid arrived in from Minneapolis at 7.30 p.m. local time as Flight 467. Lastly, at Gate 2 is this Republic Convair 580. Much of Republic's operations out of FSD consisted of this type, even their two-hour service to Chicago. Since Chicago wasn't a hub for Republic, necessarily, that would likely explain why the Convair was utilized on this route instead of the DC-9. 
Nevertheless, this Convair came in from Brookings, South Dakota at 4.14 p.m. local time as Flight 976. I hope you enjoy this retro FSD update. This was quite the fun one to do, as I've always wanted to do the much older eras of FSD. Don't get me wrong, the videos from the 2000s and late 1990s were also fun to make too, but my personal preference lies within the references found in the 1980s and prior. Regardless of those preferences, we'll come back to the 1990s for the next update. Please note that it may not come out next month due to possible conflicts in my schedule. If you want to receive the latest updates pertaining to my content as of right now, be sure to follow my Instagram page, where all updates are posted on my story. With that being said, that is the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.